It's Riley Friday. Happy Friday, listeners of Sleepers Nation. Riley Davis joins the show. With him is a vacuum in his background all week long, literally for three days. Riley and Carter have been telling me they have a surprise in store for me for Riley Friday. They made it seem like it was like a diabolical, devious little plan. Like I was going to be like in danger for some reason. Something something twisted was going to happen. No, it's just a vacuum. Riley just put a vacuum behind him and they're very proud of the fact they have matching vacuums. How are you, Riley? I'm great. I just wanted the people to see that I am a man of grit and hard work. I got... You can see the dust is there in the vacuum, so the the listeners, the viewers know that I do vacuum. And listen, I think Carter and I, we have had a week that kind of tested our friendship, uh, maybe some rocky paths that we've gone through. Uh, after his trash talk video last Saturday, UNC subsequently packs up Michigan State. Uh, there were some ducking smoke allegations, but then we have reconciled and we've come together over our love of vacuum cleaners. Um, yeah. But don't ever accuse Big Cat and Big Riz of not being household men. Yeah, there's nothing, well, at least in my time, nothing that can bring or mend a friendship like devices that suck dirt. Um, So like that just kind of just put everything into perspective for me. Also, Greg, can we never, ever refer to whatever everyone is a sleeper's nation? I hated that. Sure. I mean, you're out here tweeting screenshots of our 10,000 subscribers, but we can't unite them with a rallying name. I thought we were sleepwalkers. Do you like sleepwalkers more than Sleepers Nation? Okay, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Maybe I don't. Okay. Uh, the sentence about nothing brings two friends together like devices that suck dirt is a pretty insane thing. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that one at all? I mean, I feel like anything that happens between friends is like more clear, more of a good, fun, lighthearted time if places are clean. Mm. And well this device and this device over my shoulder is integral in that. Yeah, I can assure you that whenever the Waddell family or the Elliott family make their way to Durham and come to my household, you will walk into clean carpets. Make no mistake about that. They will be freshly vacuumed. By me. We have yeah. a Roomba, but I will be doing it manually. Yes, sir. So why do you have a Roomba then? Mainly for the hardwood floors, just that we let it we let it go and we take Scooby for a walk sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, first that of dog. all, I, it was Roomba's it was a good device. It was not a concern of mine that your carpets would be dirty when I came to your house. Don't worry, never doubted you for a second there. Uh Carter, was it pretty integral? Is that the wrong word? Integral. If this is if it's the wrong word, just let me know now. But it's the one I'm using. It's, you, it should be integral, right? Or intricate, or integral, or it's not intricate. It's not. It's not intricate. I said it's. It should be. It's very integral. integral. It's very integral. Yeah. Right. I'm just I'm integral just, would be the right word. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I was just Don't wondering. let G pronunciation shame you. Oh, well, I'm just wondering if you were going for intricate or integral. Me and G aren't good right now, and I don't know if it'll ever be the same anymore. Why? After the Dusty? Yeah, like we we were broken apart, and I don't know if it'll ever be the same again. Well, you have one little Dusty debate that turns into a Dusty divorce, and now two stupid men come on with devices to suck dust because they want to get rid of Dusty. I see what you're doing here. I understand what you're doing. You're both terrified of my basketball coach, and here we are. Uh, the hard part for me here, boys, is that I I just work so hard on this, trying to build this place. People can go listen to, you know, sports, banter, college basketball. It's March. It's the most important time of the year. And I'm trying to imagine like back when I used to listen to my favorite college basketball podcast, like Titus and Tate, if they just opened the biggest show of the year with 12 minutes on vacuums, how I would feel about it. And uh, you, t you two seem to think that's what everyone comes to listen to us for. Yeah, well, are you I saying are you saying you wouldn't like that? I am saying I would not like that. I am saying I despise this. I, oh, okay. I absolutely hate this. Okay, I I could kind of sense that. Hmm. All right, should we get to the show, or do we have do we have any other devices from the household that you both have that you would like to just make known that you own? 
I got a carpet cleaner and a couch cleaner. Riley, pressure's on you. Do you have those? I don't, but this vacuum cleaner does have a bunch of different nozzles that are uh, very versatile for whatever your vacuum cleaning nice. needs might be. Does yours detach from the top, Riley? It does. Nice. Okay, showtime. Do we want to do it? Do we want to do a YouTube comment of the day before Greg loses it? Yeah, sure. That's probably a good transition right there. I miss us, Greg. I hope we get back to what we were one day. But uh, the man Dusty, who's been in the gym looking strong, is torn you all apart. Very, <laughs> he's very strong. Very strong. I guarantee that he is a menace like in it aren't there peloton groups like you can be in groups with people yeah he's definitely like a top like percentage rider and he i feel like he has more peloton than one guy. peloton device like he's a bike tread and maybe has like that that not the peloton but the tonal mirror that thing mm -hmm. like dusty's home gym is probably elite for sure. I bet Dusty like dips into some like hit workouts, but not, not too crazy because he already lives a pretty intense life as a college basketball coach right. where he some... needs like the relaxation of the Peloton rides to sort of mellow yeah. him out. Yeah, like something to decompress. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm... Not going to do the thing that I always do when I look for YouTube comments. This one comes from Stephen Pearsall. Pearsall? I'm worried about this relationship. The world needs sleepers. I agree with Carter. Where was Dusty May's? What was where was Dusty May's record the four years prior to the Final Four run? Also, I think Carter's projecting some of his Shaka feelings toward Dusty May. Make a Final Four with a mid major, then get hired by a big boy football program. One might say that. All right, Discord comments. Okay, the Discord. Uh, join the Discord. There's a link in the description of this video. You already know that if you listen to the show. Uh, and really, I don't honestly don't join the Discord. Don't do it. Uh, this whole thing that we're doing is bound to collapse at some point. This has been a very fun year. I think we've probably reached our absolute pinnacle. And at this point, it's only downhill from here. Uh, to the comments section where, uh, oh, the first comment today actually, I think, insults Riley. So this could be fun. Uh, this is from I Maynard, who is a Duke fan. Yeah, Riley Davis does embody the smugness of UNC fans. I do think he does a good job on all the platforms he's on, though. As it stands today, UNC is just as elitist as Duke. Just visit the campus. Major quote, do you know who my dad is, vibes? <laughs> they try to act like Duke is elitist, but turn around and call NC State Moo U. North Carolina is full of rednecks and UNC fans dump NC State for having a heavy focus on agriculture while simultaneously portraying themselves as the school of the people in North Carolina. Make it make sense. I remember when I was a kid, every Duke UNC debate I won ended with Duke doesn't produce NBA players. That's how I knew I won. Now producing NBA players is completely irrelevant. Imagine that. I would love to see Caleb ball out on UNC in the Elite Eight. I would make a highlight clip of him cooking R.J. Davis with poetic justice playing in the background. But honestly, the sooner they get bounced, the better. Don't give a piss about nothing but the tide, baby. I hope UNC and Caleb both lose on Thursday. So is this this is I Maynard or J? Isn't there a J May who's a Duke fan? Or are they the uh, same person? This is I Maynard. I think there's also a J May who's a recent member to the Discord who's in the YouTube comments a lot who I've gone back and forth with some. And he always there. There's someone who I think is in the Discord who's a Duke fan who's accused me of being a homer, and I've been like, I've essentially said, no, I'm not. I've been balanced here and gave Duke credit here. The last time I said it here, like, good point. You're right. Um, in response to the allegations, yes, I'm a little smug about UNC sometimes when we lose. Uh, you also just, unfortunately for the haters, I was not recording these last year when UNC sucked. I was down bad quite frequently. And had no smugness at all. Regarding the elitist allegations, yes, I think it's elitist when UNC calls NC State moo you. I think that's pretty cringy. That's like boomer humor. Uh, and I don't say that. UNC why, students. Why do they call it moo you? Just because it's an ag school. And to try to say they're rednecks. Okay, yeah, that is. That's terrible, but go yeah, ahead. it's it's what? like not funny at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all a, it's I would even say it's aggressively unfunny. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, I think there are definitely some elite, uh, elitist elitism among UNC students as well, who want you to basically think they're at MIT in North Carolina, which is not true. Harrison Ingram definitely calls them Moo Yu, right? No, he doesn't. Harrison Ingram does not call them Moo Yu. Harrison Ingram would never say that. Not my Harrison. Also, I, also agriculture's fire. I wish I was. I wish I was just a farmer. Facts. You'd be a horrible farmer. Not if I started like early enough. Like I, I like I had that that hard work instilled in me from an early age. I feel like I it would change my life. So this comes back to your parents. They should have raised you to be a farmer. Th- they were just overall way too supportive. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it'd be a good scarecrow, Carter? Do I think I'd be a good scarecrow? Yeah. Probably because I'd be a pretty massive scarecrow. Yeah, I feel like if you like you yell a lot and you're good at intimidating people sometimes, like you you choose violence. So I feel like I don't know, like crows would probably be very afraid of you. Do I yell a lot? Like when you need to. True. Actually, you you really don't yell a lot. I don't yeah, know. I don't. From. I don't. I don't yell for a reason though. I don't yell because I'm already massive. So me yelling is just pointless. So you'd actually be a horrible scarecrow. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Glad we fleshed that out. Rowlett, Texas Boiler says, what's the best seven game format? Two, two, one, 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 or two, three, two, and why? Riley, what do you think? I think I'd go two, two, one, one, one. It, you, the NBA playoffs used to be two, three, two, didn't they? When it, that changed a few years ago though. I don't know what it is in the NBA right now. I'm pretty yeah, sure I'm, it's two two one 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 one. I'm pretty I'm pretty tapped out in the format right now of the NBA, but it did. I think a while ago. I think it's been two two one one like for a while now, though. If I'm not mistaken, it might have been two three two when we were in college at some point. Yeah, I know it was. It, it for sure it has happened before. I uh I don't think the underdog should ever get an advantage just by taking care of home court. So I like two two one 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 more. Uh, Coleman's burner, who is now going by beat Iowa State, says, "quote What you gonna do about it, Carter? I'm from the hood. I will pull up to your gated community next to you. Next time you pronounce Reese's wrong, quit talking crazy, little bro. You don't want this smoke." How did I say it wrong? You say Reese's, and it's Reese's. Oh, you know everyone has a different uh geographical twang to their the way they say things so you just gotta let it rock riley how do you pronounce the name of that candy i say reese's Mm. it's never made sense to me when people say reese's pieces sounds like feces does sound like feces it's a bar it's a really fun word to say though carson wagner says if you feel comfortable sharing what's your midwest regional itinerary looking like this weekend car you want to share the itinerary uh, I would, but we don't have one. I mean, we're we're going one place at one time. Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Harry's, which is if anyone's familiar with the area, um, at LCA, there's a bar that's kind of to the left of it. I would say, like, there's a parking garage, and then a little bit to the left of it is this place called Harry's. I had no clue that it was any relation to the Harry's in Purdue, like Harry's Chocolate Shop. I'm actually pretty sure it has no relation except the actual name harry's but it's like a two-level spot it's pretty nice i've been there a couple times before before tigers games they like open the windows and stuff on the upstairs it's pretty nice tvs everywhere um but i think we're gonna we're gonna be there around we're gonna be there around 3 p.m ish depending on how long it takes us to get down there um yeah we're gonna be with the boilers and the stands guys and probably just bop around before we go to the game if anyone's never been to lca I'm not sure how they're going to have it compared to what they do during um, during like Pistons games. But there's like bars inside, like like inside the actual stadium, but technically like on the outside in the concourse area. So like a lot to do around there. Plenty of bars for any level of like what you want to do. Like there's dive bars. There's more like upscale if you want like a fancy drink bars around that area. You really got everything you need right there. Yeah. LCA has gotten very nice. Over the yeah. last couple of years. Yeah. Parking parking might be a little something. So good luck with that. But uh besides that, it's great. Yeah, I'm excited. Come come say what up at Harry's. Uh we'll we'll be there. I believe Joe and Braggs and Craig will all be there. So we're gonna try to get there around three when they're kicking off their arrival. And uh yeah, come say what up. Anybody in the Discord would love to see you. 
Uh, ha, ha, ha. Tristan Freeman, who went on Boilers in the Stands last night, by the way, good appearance, Tristan, said, considering what's been happening after midnight in the Discord, I think it's important that I take a leadership role and take these young folks under my wing. I'm going to teach them good diets and how to make proper clickbait lists. Carl, what's been going on after midnight in the Discord? There's there's this uh, a channel we have that's like sports takes and hot takes, and the younger generation in our Discord is completely unhinged in there uh i try to stay out of there but in the few times that i poke my head in there to see what's going on i regret it every single time hmm. okay do we have a problem on our hands like do we do we need to take action we might i think koi actually stepped up and did a quick ban of who was acting up uh but they were let back in after a short time good good work koi appreciate that uh See, everybody keeps changing their name, and I don't know who these people are anymore, and I don't really like reading these out loud. But BGF, parentheses, Livy Dunn Enjoyer, says, this is the same guy that just said, I'm from the hood, like Buddy that is straight out the burbs, and they have a <laughs> screenshot of Coleman Burner's feet. I think this is what's going on in the After Dark channel, basically. I think we have some bad actors that are that's, that's even it's, it's even worse in that channel, Let let me tell you. Okay. Uh, Kevin Freeman, Unsung Goat, says, okay, just read the comments on YouTube for the UConn-San Diego State game, and perhaps some fans are closer to Coleman's burner than I initially claimed. Yeah, UConn fans have been on us. Yeah, they have. North I Carolina fans have also been on us, Riley. Do you uh, you want to speak to your fan base there? In the comments, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, both UNC and NC State fans hate y'all right now, which is crazy to me. <laughs> like, there was a... Uh... I think Carter keeps getting just they're just lobbing threats and insults at at the Brody, which is, is uncalled for. NC State gets their first title in 40 years. I think they can just talk reckless. UNC fans, y'all got to chill, too, just because we don't uh, sing Carolina's praises unwarrantedly or nonstop. Like we try to give you balanced analysis. So uh, I guess come at me if you're going to come at anybody associated with sleepers. Mike Gundy voice, if you will. Uh don't come after don't come after my co-host come after me i'm a man i'm 31 so yeah that's my official statement appreciate that uh one of the downsides of doing this so frequently is like people really just hate you and it's constant and that does like wear you down a little bit car i think honestly if there's something we can excuse our uh tension with each other this week on it's that i'm really tired of just seeing people hate us yeah, true. And we operate like, I don't know, I, I have the innate ability to not let that get to me for some reason. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I was I was bullied when I was younger or something. I have no clue. But like nothing really actually phases me, If especially like especially random people like if Riley says something about me or Greg says something about me. Honestly, that wouldn't phase me either. I might have an issue. You're one of one. Uh, yeah, I'm too sensitive for this world, which is almost assuredly going to be my downfall one day. Can I, can I say? Can I say one thing about like Riley? Cover your ears, you, UNC fans. Like you can talk about me and you can be mean to me, but like at the end of the day, let's let's take a step back. Like your main color is baby blue. Okay, you're very. You're just not that. You're just not that scary, intimidating, or mean. It just is what it is. Like. You can, I understand, enjoy this run. You guys are doing great. I'm pulling for you. But also, like, don't get mad because I say Mark Sears is a great basketball player when he is. Like, just look <laughs> at the stats and watch him play. You're acting like we're calling, like, the, the backup on some team bad. Like, Mark Sears has been incredible this year. So has R.J. Davis. They go hand in hand. So if someone picks Mark Sears over R.J. Davis, you can disagree but don't act like we're committing some war crime by doing it. Yeah, this, this... yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of Carolina fans in the comments on those YouTube channels acting like if you dare say Mark Sears is better than R.J. Davis, it means you think R.J. Davis is Stillman White. Yeah, like no, like R.J. is an All American for a reason, but Mark Sears is also incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah. This this is a program that has made their aesthetic identity for thirty plus years be argyle stripes. Just want to get that. No, which and is like, fire. Let it be. Let it be clear. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> by the way, Ed, Riley, any concerns that uh, your ex, Caleb, is uh, being very pointed about the fact that last year was the worst year of his life and he got a lot of unwarranted criticism 
and he does carry a very heavy heart about his time at North Carolina. I that is that would be the said? last that would be the last thing I would want to hear if I'm a North Carolina. I just fan. all I saw was the I got a lot of stuff that I didn't deserve, which I thought was mentioning like specifically geared towards fans. Yeah, that were hard. That yeah, that that is what I'm alluding to. I I am putting my own spice on it for sure, but like uh, <laughs> Caleb, pretty pretty clearly savoring a potential chance to ruin North Carolina fan season. That first, let me say that would be hilarious if Caleb did say, "I have a very heavy heart about my time at <laughs> UNC." <laughs> that would be electric. I couldn't even hate him on for that. I'd be like, "All right, fine, man, send my team home." Um, <laughs> Am I worried about it? Yes. Will it be scenes? Yes. Do I think UNC can still win? Yes. That's all I'm going to say about it. One of these two teams is going to blow this. I just want that known. And I, I don't. I think it's more likely Arizona that blows it. But uh, that's my prediction. Boiler Khan says, going back to men's league talk on Wednesday's pod, how would either of you guys handle being on a men's league team where everyone on the team is both trash and selfish? I'm talking one pass, jack it up, and the ball just bashes off the glass type offense. Would you try to be the change you want to see and get the offense moving more, or would you just take your 20 field goal attempts, try to get your numbers, and call it good? Card, I feel like you've dealt with this through the years. What's the move there? I have, uh, and I've always been the same. Uh, And I've been pretty lucky the past couple years in the men's league that I'm playing in. They do a good job of, like, because it's a draft-style system, like, no teams are just, like, completely one-sided. Like, a whole team is, like, just trash. Um, But in the last experience I had with that, I always try to be the change that I want to see. I try to move the ball. I try to pass the ball in order to inspire others to not just jack it or pass the ball or do the right thing. Um, And that usually comes to a stop when it's like the end of that season. And then like, I let everybody know that this was the worst time of my life and I never, ever want to see anyone else again. And then I jack up 30. Hmm. Riley, have you dealt with this problem? Uh, I actually played pickup yesterday at the Y and we had a guy on our team who was just pulling up from, 30 feet every time he touched the ball and then getting cooked on defense by a, this short little point guard and then had the nerve to when we we gave up a big run he had the nerve to tell the rest of the team that we needed to pick our defense up when he was the one getting cooked in those situations I pout and walk back on defense that's my response <laughs> if yeah. you're trashing if you're trash and selfish I am not the change I start yeah. I stop giving effort <laughs> that's that's more my reaction as well back to me being sensitive I normally just leave I just leave the gym immediately like I have been known to just the moment a game ends even if it's the first game like I'm not wait I'm just going home if I'm on a team I don't want to play uh I have other things to do with my time can I quickly ask you guys what's your go-to form of like trash talk in pickup or, or men's league or whatever you want to call it. Like Carter, let's say you like dice someone up off the dribble tween, step back three in a dude's face. What is your immediate next move? See, I, I really change it up. I always keep my, my trash talk fresh. Uh, currently I have two, the three go-tos uh, off a of pass. I've been wearing goggles lately. So usually I'll take them off and like look at them and check them and then put them back on after I make a good pass. Uh, if I make a good post move, I like looking at the other player and doing this. That's that's a that's a new favorite of mine. And then if I hit a three, I always look at the bench usually, like the bench of the other team and start shaking my head. That's it. So nothing verbal, all all visual cues from you. It's all it's all it's all visual until the other person gets verbal with me. And then usually I'll bring out, you know, a little bit of everything. Like get this little baby off me. Like if I wanted kids, I'd have my own, like, you know, usually the the, the classic go-tos. Okay. Uh, Riley, for some reason I can envision you being like John Pulakitas and like, you just look at the bench, like, like this, when something good happens, what would, uh, what's your go-to? <laughs> no, my go-to is a flex. Just, just a classic one of those, because it, the only oh, time I really talk a ne- little you're bit, never, you're never dodging the Argyle <laughs> allegations, man. The only, well, okay, let me explain. The I'm like 5'11". And the only time I ever talk a little bit of trash is if I score in the post because people underestimate that I can hit you with a drop step and score over you because I, I do have a, a wider frame. And so that, that, that ties into why I got to give a little flex. But I'm also not good enough to like actually chirp. So I, I have to go nonverbal. Got it. Understood. Uh, okay. Interesting. Mine, for the record, uh, like if I hit a three, it's usually because I hit an open three, got myself open somehow. Uh, the go-to always is, you're leaving that? You're leaving that? 
really just <laughs> that's that is hilarious that i actually knew that because you yeah. did that remember we played at lansing catholic and i yeah. think i didn't like chase a screen enough and you said you literally said that exact word i'm, I'm glad to know you're true to the brand well the thing is because like so <laughs> i like to believe in my head i get a lot of open threes and pick up because i truly believe i am an elite off ball player like i will find the crevices and in in pickup nobody has great team help side defense like they're not locked in i'm gonna get open if i have a decent passer next to me uh so if i hit my first one yeah just the key is it's got to be loud enough that everyone hears it but quiet enough or in a different direction enough that they don't think I was saying it directly to them. Like, I just want them to register. Oh shit. Like I did leave him shit. Like I can't leave him. Uh, mental warfare. It really works. Okay. Mano MMA says with Terrence Shannon, Coleman and Damask all leaving next year, should we prepare for an Illini drop off or does daddy Brad hit that reload button and runs back being a portal merchant? Reload. <laughs> that easy. Yeah, like, come on, man. Like, Brad knows what to do. He's He knows how to work the portal. He will, you know, he's going to get portal guys. The only thing that Illinois fans should be worried about is, you know, one, do the portal guys fit to how much caffeine do they induce or, you know, or, or, or drink? That's literally all you got to worry about. Because, like, even – this is the thing with Illinois fans, and it's not all of them. I, I, when we do that, I do apologize for that. I feel like sometimes we – put all fans in a bubble, but like there's a large portion or a couple of Illinois fans that I've talked to that have been like, Oh, Brad didn't like do enough in the portal the year before he did do enough in the portal. He just, those guys just didn't work. They didn't fit. He did a great job of that this year. And if he needs to reload, he's going to do the same thing next year and get guys. So yeah. that's, that, that's who he is. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I would try and get the mask though. You could theoretically get the mask back for one year if they get a, uh, uh, they have to get like what the NCAA to give him an extra year from an injury redshirt or something. But I would yeah, try. They I'm, they, they, uh, they have a big enough bag to get the mask back because yeah. like I I think his bag could beat out a two way NBA deal or whatever he has on the horizon. If there's even a five percent chance of that happening, you should flesh that out and see it through first because the mass back for another year would be special. Uh Eric NJ Boiler96 said he posted this a couple days ago and uh we must have missed this. Sorry, Eric. He says, uh, isn't that the definition of a chaos agent? High highs, low lows. Lance Jones is the John Starks of this Purdue team. Edie is Ewing, Smith is Doc Rivers, Lawyer is Hubert Davis, TKR is an Oakley Mason hybrid. This is matching up pretty well. Hopefully there won't be a white Ford Bronco chase during the title game. Uh, only Purdue fans would favorably, happily, emotionally compare their greatest team in college basketball history to a team that never won a title. I was just about to say that. <laughs> like the, that's the, That team is famous for never getting it done. Yeah. Again, they worship Gene Cady, who the largest thing on Gene Cady's Wikipedia entry is that he never got it done. Uh, Riley, a little Hubert Davis shout out there, though. I mean, once again, it's just a shame it's on a losing team. <laughs> they made it, man. They just couldn't get over the hump. Lyrics says, am I wrong to assume that Greg loves him some video game tennis? Just seems like a perfect fit somehow. Uh, I think you are wrong. I downloaded one tennis video game on Xbox a couple of years ago, and it, it was horrible. It was awful. I played it once. I, did, you, did you used to love uh, Mario Tennis, though? That was fun. Mario Tennis was fun. Anything with the Wii was fun. Um, you know what? One day we'll have to have an actual discussion. The Wii was honestly generational. Yeah, it was. It was, it was pretty sick. Really good times. Ju Bowie says, I worked at the Culver's the summer after high school, and I would highly recommend trying the sourdough melt and the spicy chicken sandwich. Mm. I, I've had the sourdough melt. I can vouch. Fire. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Jesse says, since I've already had one Purdue team go up, big at half and blow it this week that means the big purdue team is safe from implosion right what other purdue team went up big and lost was that women i think it was purdue fort wayne if i'm not uh, that's what oh, i'm guessing jesse pfw yeah the mastodons tough tough break um did does jesse i don't know jesse's background maybe he went to school with P, pfw or look i'm not going to tell you how to fan you can be a fan of whoever you want but are you allowed to claim both purdue and purdue fort wayne if I'm not mistaken, and there's a there's a 97 percent chance I am, I think that he worked at 
IPFW or did something for them after he went to Purdue. But I, I could be completely wrong. Is it like like bundling them together as like my Purdue teams? Are you okay with that? Uh, only because it gives big like I went to Central, but I'm a Michigan fan vibe. Well, I, listen, I literally try to claim both Michigan State and Michigan at times. I just would never bundle those together and be like, my Michigans. You know, that feels oh, wait, weird. Wait a minute. Is Jesse a pioneer? Is that what you should just go with? Like, my <laughs> Michigans are my Michigans are here? That honestly would be kind of – Jesse might have just changed the game for me. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Augie <laughs> says, have you seen the thing going around about how UConn could make the NBA playoffs? I think it's broadly accepted that's a bad take. Some people have fired back. I personally think the Pistons would cook – the F out of UConn, but that's just me. Your thoughts. Carter, you're shaking your head. Because it's, it's the most annoying thing of all time. They do it every single year. They fire up first take, the jump, what get up, whatever morning ESPN show. And they talk about how this great, great NCAA team could make like the play-in or be the A seed or beat like the worst team in the NBA. And it's just like, it's it's annoying. It's exhausting. It's wrong. And I hate it. I truly hate it. I thought we put this notion to bed in 2015 when it was like, oh, Kentucky could make the playoffs. And then they got packed up by Sam Decker and Frank Kaminsky. Like, it is it is the I, dumbest talking point we've hey, seen numerous. Good basketball team. It, okay. It, it they were tough. Good, Sam Decker was, was a good tough, basketball but... team. But, like, I don't think people – do people, like, not realize that some of, like, the players in the NBA that can't even get off the bench were, like – all Americans in college, like first team, like all conference players in college. There's, there's all Americans in college that never even make it in the NBA. Like, yeah. It's, it's just different. That's the thing. It's like, like one of the worst players in the NBA is like James Wiseman. And he would be a no brainer. First team, all American. If he was in college right now. Yeah. Like no question. Like that. It's, so, it's, it's, stupid. it's tough. Uh, Travis. Wait, Nelson, wait, wait, Greg, can I, one last thing on that. Did you see the sports book that actually handicapped that? <laughs> no. Yeah, like I think I, I saw it on Twitter. Someone did, and it would have. I think they had the Bulls minus forty three against UConn, and like the Pistons minus like forty two, forty one, something like that. Like okay. that, that. With that said, could not bet UConn plus forty two fast enough. <laughs> like that's. I, if you you give me Hurley, man, Hurley would find a way. He'd run some act. There'd be something there. Uh, Travis Nelson says, thinking about how Illinois has the same amount of Sweet 16s as Michigan State in the past five seasons. Michigan also has more despite missing the last two tournaments. I know I was spoiled early in my fandom with second weekend and Final Four appearances, but it's time to wake up. Car, that was a Michigan State fan saying that. Your thoughts? I mean, I've, I've been very clear that the last four years have been ass and unacceptable. Mm. And... But yeah, well, you know what? Streak, right? Streak in that one sweet 16. It is funny how much the narratives change based on like one result these days, because like for months leading up to this, everyone in the Discord's been able to be like, Y'all haven't made a sweet 16 since 2005 to Illinois. And now it's like we have the same number of sweet 16s as y'all in five years. Like that's just... the, the, the joy of college sports, man. All it takes is just you gotta gather that one. Swing so wildly. I Maynard is back. Says, "What are your favorite song lyrics about college basketball?" My top two are "Fabulous" on "Respect It," "LV" on "Like a Running Rebel," Duke Chain got a cross full of Blue Devils, and Jack Harlow on "I Do Anything to Make You Smile." Hotel Five Stars, like I play for Coach Cal, but they call me Young Patino because I'm good in both towns. Riley, is this a burner account for you? <laughs> That just pretends to be a Duke fan and goes back and forth with me. And yeah, insults me. honestly, based, based on two comments, I think this might be you. I guess he did pay me a compliment when he said I'm I'm good on all platforms. So maybe it is my burner. <laughs> What's your favorite uh, college basketball related song lyric, Riley? Uh, the first one that came to mind. Oh, remember when when Jay Cole said, "Brother, you lame, you shame, Battier." I'll probably go with that one. Yeah, that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> It's a good one. Why did that? Oh, Country Day cart. That one hurt. Yeah. 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 Shame bad. And my funny random story. Quick one. My sister-in-law was at a wedding last week and she sat at a table with Shane Battier. Like actually. It's an absurd drop. Absurd drop. Uh, Was he lame? 
she actually said he was really she said he she said he was really cool and his wife was like very cool and they're just like living life in Miami like on the water just being big time that's fun love that do you have a favorite song lyric cart nah, honestly there's not a college one that comes in my head off the top okay mine would be caught him down in Memphis cheating like Calipari that was going to be my other one Greg and then I just remembered one more from Wale that was generational at the time I'm gonna let the chips fall brothers with Kimba Walker trying to see me pitfall yeah, that was a good that one. was so sick like right after uh Kimba hit the step back on pit I think he released it like the next year maybe within the same year yeah that is that is good it's very good Janny boy Terp says how many years do you think the Michigan fan base will give Dusty to figure out hypothetically how many non-tourney seasons do you think he'd be allotted uh it depends on what happens like if he if he brings his whole roster with them and they miss the tournament and then he has to replace those guys in year two and they miss the tournament again. I think his seat would be hot immediately, immediately following that second year. Uh, if I, I like, I'm just projecting, but if he brings those guys with him, I think they're a tournament team. And as long as that happens, I think it would buy him at least through year three, but hard to say, hard to say without knowing what he's going to do. Yeah. I was, I mean, just generally, I was going to say five years. That's a lot of years, man. Cause like Jawan. Well, well, like, in like generic, like generic form. Well, obviously it depends on like what his success is, but in my head, I'm thinking like he has all these transfers. He has his FAU team. That's like one kind of separate year from like his Michigan tenure, in my opinion, because then it starts over. It's more like a quote unquote blank slate. And then you see like what his recruits and transfers do in that, in that time. But I guess technically in this day and age, coaches have a shorter shorter time because you can't make an excuse of that like your recruits don't work out like go get someone from the transfer portal then i think if the the bar has been set that if you miss the ncaa tournament back-to-back -back years your seat is going to be scorching at michigan and i believe that to be true with dusty um do you do you think that but then part of that had to do with like the other stuff with Jawan? like if he it, his seat wouldn't have not been as scorching if like he wasn't like hitting people and fighting John Sanders. I really, I really don't think that's true. I think it was about how bad they were because that, that like there was no talk of Jawan's going to lose his job when they were in the Sweet Sixteen two years ago. Like the Sanderson thing sucked, but Sanderson left the program, not Jawan. So to me, like they were willing to excuse all of his bad behavior as long as they kept winning. To me, uh, I would, I would call it three years. If they missed the tournament the first two years with Dusty that seat will be incredibly hot going into year three. Miss it a third year, then I think it's like, okay, time to move on. But again, like, it also depends, like, does he have a good recruiting class? Like, if he has, if he lands a great freshman class in year three after missing the tournament twice and there's clear upward trajectory, then maybe you feel different. Really, really hard to say. Um, hopefully, there's an answer clearly if he brings his three stars with him. I don't think we're going to have to deal with a lot of these questions. Uh, Fam says... Happy Bluffs Friday, all. What's on the radar looking ahead to Easter weekend? How does a hoops nut and a man of faith balance weekends like these with huge expectations? If Cart and G celebrate, please tap in as well. I know Greg went over the handmade basket earlier this week, which gained respect from me. Riley, what's on, on deck for Easter in the Davis household? Going to Charlotte tomorrow on Friday, I guess when people are listening to this. Uh, I'm going to spend some time with my family. I think my mom... Dad, sister, her husband will all be at the Good Friday service in Charlotte, but just based on Theo's bedtime, we will not be in attendance. However, we will go on Easter Sunday, but thankfully, my mom is very into UNC hoops, so should Carolina win Thursday night, the two of us and Natalie will be watching the game on Saturday. No questions asked. Mm. Like that, Carter, you've mentioned you have uh, Easter festivities with the family on Sunday. Yeah, uh, I, I do, but the the games come first uh unfortunately during this time um if 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 it doesn't have any crossover with the games then i'll be fine also a wrinkle that's been thrown in uh man city plays arsenal at 11 30 a.m on sunday too so uh it, it might be tough to make uh easter mass this year you hate to see the lord fall second in the standings i know that hurts riley very much to hear you say that on this program yeah, well, you know, the Lord doesn't like lying either. That's true. Fair. Uh, <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, Riley, we did ask last time you were on the show. This was a couple weeks ago, but uh, we, we asked you to give us a little theological sermon, maybe. Uh, maybe give you a couple minutes to prepare, but maybe you could read a verse for us at some point before we get to the topics today. Okay, I, I can make that happen. 
Okay. Yeah, I'll give you a couple minute warning here as we finish up the comments. Uh, Travis Nelson is back, said, I'm enjoying that since the Sweet 16 is here, the national media is coming out in full force to defend Zach Eady against the haters. If you can't see his talent, that's on you. Honestly, a joke. He's a great kid from all accounts. However, I can appreciate his greatness and also not like watching him play. Both can be true. Also wanted to add after talking with Go Boilers Blake below that it isn't Purdue's fault in any way. It's just the reality of having a seven foot four guy that nobody can guard. Yeah, the it seems like it was field of 68 and also like Rafael Davis and a, a lot of people kind of running online with like, why does everybody hate Zach Eady right now? I saw Kevin Sweeney had a big monologue on the after dark show the other night about it. Um, card, any thoughts? Uh, I mean, I feel like I agree with it. It's good to see. Um, also like it, it, it why now kind of, is, yeah. is what I say about it. Why now? Because I feel like it's been going on for such a long time. And honestly, some, some people have been pushing that narrative a lot. Um, the one thing I'll say off of Travis's comment is for me, I don't understand why Purdue fans get worked up when people say the phrase like Zach Eady is great, but I don't enjoy watching him play. And then that just completely works uh, works them up. And they're like, well, I, oh, you don't enjoy watching the number one offense? Oh, all you want to do is watch people dribble around and shoot shots and not run sets? Like, I enjoy watching sets. Okay, that's that's fine. People are entitled to say that Zach Eady is great and a national player of the year while also saying they don't enjoy watching him play basketball. That you just got to let let them – or let watching him play basketball. I think you just got to let that let that go, in my opinion. Yeah. I, uh, look, any sort of positivity discussion on Edie, I think is always worth it. We have definitely tried our best to make it known how generational we think he is as a player. Talk about how great of a person he is. I think we've done that consistently throughout the year. Uh, I will be honest with you from what I saw that was clipped and just the way this conversation was presented this week kind of did annoy me that it's like, oh, we waited until Purdue made the second weekend, and now we're going to be the white knights of saving Zach Eady's character. Um, he's been a great person all along, even when they were losing to a 16 seed, and now suddenly it's time to talk about it. feels a little strange to me. I don't think Zach Eady needs national media defending him this way. I think he has already owned this as a great person. But again, it's good. Anybody nationally talking about how good of a person Zach Eady is is objectively good. I wish they wouldn't frame the conversation and clip it out and have thumbnails that say, why does everyone hate Zach Eady? To me, that actually doubles down and makes the people who do hate him be even louder about it. I can tell you, like, if I was Zach Eady, I wouldn't enjoy seeing there's a video. Why do people hate me right now? Um, I think you can have that conversation in a more nuanced way and didn't love it. Felt, felt a little icky to me that that's sort of where we're trying to drive the Zach Eady combo uh, at this point in the postseason. So... That's my thoughts. Uh, I think that's all the comments today. Riley, any uh, any words from the Lord that you would like to share with our listeners? <laughs> yes, I do. I always want to preface this by saying I'm not trying to force my beliefs on anybody or make like anybody conform to what I believe. Just pick this verse because it's something that I think is very powerful and even would explain why I believe what I do. So it's a scene after Jesus has risen from the dead on Sunday and it's he appears to Mary, Mary Magdalene, um, who is kind of a central figure throughout the, the the gospels. And it says this, it's John chapter 20, verses eleven through sixteen it says, But Mary stood out outside the tomb crying. As she was crying, she stopped, stooped to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you crying? Because they've taken away my Lord, she told them, and I don't know where they put him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Woman, Jesus said to her, why are you crying? Who is it that you're seeking? Supposing he was the gardener, she replied, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. Turning around, she said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Uh, this is a verse that has always stuck out to me because you see she recognizes it's Jesus upon him saying her name. And... I find that so encouraging because part of at least why I believe in this, have faith in this is just the, the comfort of knowing that like God knows who we are. He takes, takes notice of our lives and cares about us deeply. Thank you. Uh, Riley, indispensable man. Truly. Yeah. One of one. I appreciate that. Uh, that brought me back to my Catholic upbringing right there. And uh, yeah, great, great verse. Appreciate you sharing the word. 
with with our of people. Course. Uh, hopefully, I, I can see us getting hate for this. Also, just having like religion speak on the show. It's Easter weekend, folks. We are who we are. We're our roots. We're gonna let Riley be Riley and give him a platform to do so. Uh, and lastly, if you don't see the parallels between that verse and North Carolina not knowing who Caleb Love is, who they cast aside <laughs> uh, on this weekend, that we're going to have to have a little bit of a discussion here. Thank you to well all the said. Discord comments. Thank you to everybody in the Discord. Join the Discord if you want. Like I said, you shouldn't. This is this is going to crash and burn very, very soon. Uh, there's a link, though, if you want to join. Hey, also, we're presented by MyBookie. I think I've forgotten to do the my bookie read three consecutive days on this program, but we do it for every preview and recap video. So at least we're making it up to my bookie card. Do you want to tell the people about my bookie quickly? Yeah, my bookie is the official sports book of Sleepers Media, and it has everything you need. You can get odds boosts, player props, alternate lines, parlay, straight bets, anything you really need to make it easy to play your way and get paid. And right now, if you use promo code Sleepers, we have an offer for you for a first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars just by using promo code sleepers enjoy the madness the madness is still ongoing we got sweet 16 games elite eight the final four in the championship game are on the horizon download my bookie today use promo code sleepers for that first deposit bonus and uh go ahead and win yourself maybe win yourself a little money what other show on earth do you get scripture and then my bookie offers back to back in the 20 second span like riley next week can we do riley's he is risen reading of the day presented by my bookie is that allowed <laughs> that would be electric <laughs> that would be great All presented right. by crew and my bookie <laughs> <laughs> riley let's get to the show what do you got for our first topic <laughs> all right first topic i have x factors for each sweet 16 team and what i mean by this i know you talked about most important players earlier this week but this one is more so like if x happens this team can make the final four so you could pick a player or a group of players you could pick a style of play something they need to execute uh it's generally open-ended but for the sake of time we're not all three gonna weigh on each sweet 16 team but we'll just move on down the line and one person gets to pick the x factor for each love it okay let's do it uh we do want to have the caveat this will come out friday morning so some of the games have already played that's okay. We're going to project as if uh, maybe we know what's going to happen in the Thursday night games. So uh, I'll just read off teams. We're going to go in order of the time of the games because I'm looking at the ESPN app. Uh, Riley, you assign who you want to give the X factor. First team is Clemson. I can take that one. Um, in order for Clemson to make the final four, they got to keep this Chase Hunter hot streak going. He had over 20 points in both their first two games. You need him to produce, and I guess you could lump in the backcourt as a whole. Uh, they, I think in order to beat Arizona, they need both Hunter and Joe Girard on. I like that uh, shout. All right, sake of time, we're going to keep it moving. Arizona. Let's go, Greg. As simple as this, they need Caleb Love to not ruin himself publicly in a game. Like, he, he can't go three for 21 from the floor, and he probably will at some point. But if he keeps avoiding that, he's done it two straight games. If they get the exact Caleb Love they got the first two games, I think Arizona wins this region relatively easily and then is probably staring UConn down in the Final Four. Should be interesting. San Diego State. Uh, let's go known Jaden Ledee. Do I want, dare I say hater? Dare I say appreciator? Somewhere in between Carter Elliott. I was going to say you go with the guy that looks like him. Um... I think the X factor for San Diego State is I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Darion Tremel actually. I'm gonna say Darion Tremel because I think that Butler does enough to help out Ladee most of the times, but Tremel has kind of had, at least in my opinion, a, a drop off from what I thought he would be uh from what he did last year coming into this season. Um and he has shown in the big moments in the Elite Eight last in the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight last year that he can make the winning plays mm -hmm. to kind of get them over the hump. And if he, if there's so much focus on the D and then if there's no focus on the D, then it's on Butler probably most likely. I think there'll be a chance for Tremel to make a play. So if they do go to a final four, Tremel, I think is going to have to be a massive factor in that. I like that shout. All right. UConn. Greg. <sighs> UConn needs. It's hard because, like, they're so damn solid. They just need, like, the other team to not go nuclear from three, I feel like, and they're fine. I will say UConn needs to avoid distraction. 
that's the X factor. Like I, I want to know that Hurley is just not distracted by some craziness that has nothing to do with the game that's unfolding in front of him. As long as he's not fighting a fan. I think these players are so good that they're, they're perfectly fine. Alabama. Part. Alabama will make a final four if they can somehow encompass what Grant Nelson was doing on those highlight tapes before he came to Bama. For real. Like, because I think that this team, and it might be wrong, but I, in my opinion, this team wants Aaron Estrada to be Robin so bad. And I think he's just an awful Robin. And I know that he has the ability to go off and he has in games this year. But if it's Sears Nelson, like Batman Robin, and that includes Nelson playing to the level that I think he has shown and not being somewhat a little bit, a little bit tentative at times. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would really unlock things with this team instead of the whole Sears Estrada portion of it. I agree with that 100%. Uh, I couldn't be more out on Estrada just for the record. North Carolina, Riley, I assume you're taking this one. Yeah, I would say bench play. If they can get consistent contributions from Seth Trimble, Jalen Washington, and Jalen Withers, like any, if any of them can contribute anywhere from six to 10 points, I think that helps a lot. Cause a lot of these teams that are left, um, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago with six man of the year discussions, uh, pretty much every team has shaky bench play or maybe not shaky, but streaky bench play. And if you can just get one of those dudes to be reliable, come and make a big play. I think that'll help them be to beat both presumably Arizona and Alabama. Hmm. Good shout. Agree with that. Illinois. I can take this and then I want to open it up to y'all to see what you would say. I think this Arizona team could benefit from getting Marcus Damas to the line more. Cause hey, I DeMass. think, yeah. And I could be off base. I don't know Illinois like y'all do, but just looking at this matchup with Iowa state, that is so physical defensively. If Damas is able to get their guys in foul trouble um, and get to the line, I feel like that's going to help their chances to make sure that, I mean, it's tough to say that like you don't, uh, there aren't many critiques you could give this offense. It's the number one offense in the country, but I feel like against a defense like this, getting points at the charity stripe will be tantamount to their success. Especially against Iowa State. Um, I know this is coming out after that game, but 100%, like, they, they need free points. I like that shout. Cart, do you, uh, anything you would add on Illinois? Um, let's see here. Uh, it, it, it's this, this is kind of broad, but and I'm not sure I'm, I'm actually going to lob it to you, Greg, and see if you can like finish my thoughts somewhat here. Uh, it, it's something mental about where this team needs to needs to be mentally, um, because right now they're playing with so much confidence. And the only thing in the back of my head that scares me is that like. They're confident because of like who they've been playing, right? They've been confident because they've avoided the big bad wolf. Like they avoided Purdue up into it on this run. Iowa State to me is a big bad wolf type team. So I'm interested to see where they are mentally, you know, once that once they go up against Iowa State. So I, I guess mental yeah. is, is kind of what I'd say. Yeah, I think I I framed it in the Discord as like one thing I'm worried about for Illinois is the the moment they realize they're playing a really, really good team. And that that's different because I think in Illinois heads, they think they are rolling right now, playing a new level. They haven't. And none of the analytics show that that's true. The The analytics show that they have played one tourney caliber team in the last two weeks. And it was Wisconsin. And that was a dog fight. So uh, even Ohio state, they had to come back in the second half. Uh, Nebraska was very close for the first 20 minutes. Duquesne, I've talked about, it. they're worse than Penn State. You get a Duquesne team that's worse than Penn State in the round of 32, you feel very fortunate. There's going to be a moment very early in the Iowa State game where everybody looks around and realizes, holy shit, this is a top five team in the country. And uh, are they ready for that moment? I guess we'll have to see. For that reason, I would say Illinois needs to get off to good starts more than any team in this tournament. Like if they're up 10, I trust this team a lot more than if they're down 10-0 immediately and trying to scramble and figure it out. Uh, the final team here would be the team they're playing, Iowa State. I'll take this one as well. And uh, also kind of want your feedback here. I think Kasha, 
excuse me, Kashawn Gilbert and Milan Momsilovic need to play like the best prospects on the team that I think they are. I think these are Iowa State's two best NBA prospects. Uh, even I take Gilbert over Lipsy because of the size. I think he gets to the line a ton. Uh, wasn't very efficient in their last game. I think he was only three for 14 from the floor against Wazoo. And then Momsilovic, you need that guy who showed up against Houston, had 18 points. Uh, but of course, it's easier to do that when you're in a game that you're up 20 than it is if it gets tight down the stretch. But what do y'all think? I think these are probably the two most interesting ones with Illinois and Iowa State, especially since they got presumably UConn lurking. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I, I mean, we pointed out in the other exercise that we did with Monchilovich, so I won't go deeper in that. But Gilbert is a guy that Greg and I have talked about, like even coming into the tournament, that like he needs to be that that guard like I, I love what Lipsy does all around as the point guard of the team but we're talking about a guy who can score the ball in bunches go off carry the scoring load uh Gilbert's that guy mm -hmm. yeah I, I I like the mom Chilovich shout um I think what if he's the only guy on the team I think can like effortlessly just get them 15 points some games without trying and if that happens then they're their defense is so good. They're usually going to win those games. There's also games where he is like completely not heard from. And then those right. are the games their, their offense stagnates. So I like that shout a lot. Okay. To the Friday games. Uh, we'll start with the earliest one. NC state. Part. Mm. The other DJ, the other DJ, the one without the vending machines, the one that's not doing interviews the one that can score in absolute bunches, the one who flipped off referees earlier in the season, that DJ needs to be special because when it comes down to it, guard play is massive in March. So I, I'd say DJ Horn. The other DJ. Wow. Fascinating. Marquette? I'll give that to you, Greg. Kolick needs to be the best player on the court. Uh, if we're talking, how does this team win a national championship? He needs to no brainer, be the best player on the court, prove people like me and cart wrong who have doubted him his entire career. He's obviously a great point guard. Now we're going to see if he's that great of a point guard. He gets NC state in this round. He's the best player on the floor. No doubt. I think he's going to shred that defense with DJ Burns. Uh, if they win that game, you're looking at Houston. Can he outplay Jamal Shedd? Can he find answers against that defense? Or you get Duke. Jeremy Roach has been to a Final Four. He started on that game. Jeremy McCain's unstoppable right now. Can Kolick actually carry a team and be the face of it? That's my question. Uh, Gonzaga. Greg, I'm going to let you double up. Take the Zags. Ooh! Uh, this might be a cop-out. I'm going I'm to call it like this, though. Mark Few needs to masterclass his way to a national championship. I think that... Uh, we're in this weird state in the sport right now where all the coaches who had repeatedly won championships and done this before all chose to leave. I'm talking Jay Wright. I'm talking Coach K. I'm talking all these men who have just decided, yeah, not for me anymore. I'm out. Goodbye. Roy Williams as well. Um, Mark Few is one of the three or four best coaches in college basketball still, and he hasn't won the big one, but he's been to Final Fours. And he's in a region full of guys who collapse in March. He's got Matt Painter first, then he's got Rick Barnes or Greg McDermott. There is absolutely a world here where Mark Few just pulls a rabbit out of his hat. And we speculated in November, like, you know, maybe it's it's the Gonzaga team nobody sees coming that becomes the special one. And it's a legacy moment for Mark Few. That's kind of how this went. They didn't win either of the titles, but they're playing their best ball at the right time right now. Top five teams since February 1st. And uh, if you look at how they've won some of these games, like what they did to Kansas, Connor Hope called it out on the preview. They just find whatever action works and they just run it over and over and over again, 20 times. And the other coaches don't adjust. And I think that could absolutely happen against a team built around Zach Eady defensively, put the pressure on Matt Painter, few beats Painter head to head and the wheels are off. Purdue. Hart. Hmm. You know, I was close to saying, I was close to saying paint, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with Fletch on this one. I think they need a third guy, and I don't trust Lance to be that third guy. I think Fletch can be that third guy, and Fletch has the body of work where he torches 
teams in big games. Like he torched the Tennessees of the world. Like he hooped in the Arizona game. Like those are all like top three seeds in each of the region. Like Fletch being the quote unquote big game Fletch that he is at this portion is going to be massive for them. Cause I, I, cause we know what Edie, Edie and Braden are going to do. Yeah. I agree. I like that shout. They need him. also, why hasn't anyone referred to Edie and Braden as like Eden? Like wow. that's just a, I mean, that's, there's gotta be some type of just NIL deal out there for that. A lot, so much, uh, theology, today. religious imagery. <laughs> yeah. Garden of Eden. I like it. Uh, Duke. I can take this one. I think defense. Uh, they've... <laughs> I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and take the Duke one. <laughs> I mean, I am the ACC guy. No, nah, I think they, they have to continue to guard like they have these first two rounds. Um, I said this on our preview or our recap with, of the Vermont game. Vermont kept trying to spread Duke out, get Kyle Filipowski out of the paint, which actually worked in his favor. He's very good at moving his feet on the perimeter. He's a lot more comfortable doing that than I think he is guarding guys in the post. Uh, luckily for him, I could be off base on this, so correct me if I'm wrong, Juwan Roberts coming in beat up to where I don't think Houston's necessarily going to throw the ball to him down low and let him cook. So if Duke can continue to defend how they have, they, I mean, it's going to be right there to beat Houston. I like that. I agree. Okay, Houston. Mm, Greg. Hmm. I think huh, I don't like saying this player because I'm I'm skeptical on him. I think they need LJ Cryer to carry the the load offensively. And I've been pretty underwhelmed with LJ. I know he's had very good games this year. He's also had like complete stinkers. I didn't mm-hmm. expect that. I thought he would come in and be like a uh, no-brainer top two or three player in the Big 12 in that offense. Uh, to me, I don't trust him as the first option offensively of a Houston team, which is part of why I like Duke to actually win this game. But that's another story. They need him to be a superstar if they're going to win a title. Creighton? All right, let's, uh, let's hear you talk about your Jays. There comes a time when you stare somebody across from you that everyone says is better than you. And you look at it and you say, what, you, what are you going to do about it? Like, what are you really going to do about it? Like, if I came face to face with another light-skinned podcaster and he was better than me, I'd expect me to step up. I'd take that as a challenge. I'd be ready for that. I want to do that. I want that. And that's what Baylor Shireman has to do. Baylor Shireman's a bad man, and I just want that to be known. And I think Baylor Shireman is going to put the world on notice that he is one of the baddest men in college basketball against the aforementioned baddest man in college basketball besides Zach Eady and Dalton Connect. Baddest man is crazy. I mean, I'm going to give you a lot of credit if this comes to fruition, but like, I feel like you've just like put your name on the 12th best player in the sport as if he's the best player in the sport. And I don't know. I haven't heard this from you all year. It like it emerged in the last week. Work in silence sometimes. <laughs> it's fascinating to me. <laughs> Tennessee, final one, Tennessee. I'll take Tennessee, and I'm going to say Jonas Adu, getting them some easy buckets around the rim. If you look at what he did against Texas, four for 12 from the field, that was a game that turned into a slog. Texas dragged them into the mud. Granted, Tennessee is very comfortable winning that way, but they're playing a lot better teams in Texas down the stretch, and I think if the offense breaks down, just in case Connect has another off night, you need someone who can get you some easy looks around the rim. I I don't trust... Santi Vescovi to get right. I think I love Zakai Ziegler, but he can be a little erratic. Josiah Jordan James, not much of a scorer. I think they got to get it. They It's got to be Jonas Adu who can get them some some looks down low. Uh, I like that. I think that is needed. Uh, also, this is a legacy bet game for Carter and I. Tennessee Creighton will be in the building for this, but the loser has to buzz cut their hair. Uh, Riley, which which side of that do you – think has a better chance of winning i'm on tennessee he's on creighton i think tennessee has a better chance of winning but i think greg with a buzz cut would be hilarious it'd be like a throwback to like a 2009 in your letterman jacket going out for the football team (laughs) i'm really scared for the record i've never had a buzz cut in my life uh i used to have the mob top in high school so this would be a first and i'm honestly i'm a little afraid it wouldn't grow back if i do this so it'll it'll, it'll, it'll grow back uh, what if you like it it could be the end of my hair what if you like it i won't like it you know no chance no 
But like you got to think of the positives here. Like you have a beard. Beard with a buzz is honestly a good combo. True. It might that's work true. for you. I guess that's true. I you can unlock something right here. You can always wear hats as well. You can always wear hats. I guess we'll see. I just need Dalton Connect to, as he scored his 43rd point of the night, look Shireman dead in the eyes and hit this. That'll be my happy moment. We'll see. Okay, fun topic. Thank you for that. Riley, topic number two. So I'm going to let you all look a little ahead, a little bit ahead to next year. You have teams that are rebuilding, reloading, if you want to throw that on a, a positive outlook. If you could pick two players out of the transfer portal, doesn't matter if they've committed somewhere right now. Doesn't matter if they're seen as a heavy lean to school. Which two players are you taking for your respective programs and why? Mm. Cart, I'm gonna let you go first. So you said which two players would I take? Mm -hmm. Okay, and does it have to be players that are in the portal already? Yeah, they have to be in the portal already. There are some good names. Yeah. Um. Hmm. All right. Last last caveat. Does that have to be realistic? No. As long as they're in the portal, they're eligible. Okay. Um. Let's see here. I think... Oh, man. Okay. For the big man, I actually think I would take Pharrell Payne right now. I think I'd go Pharrell Payne. So, honestly, you, that makes sense. Are you taking him over Cliff? I forgot Cliff's in the portal. I'm gonna say like just and when you threw Payne out, I was like, wouldn't you just take Cliff? I I completely forgot Cliff was in the portal. That's on me. Yeah, Similar actually, concept. yeah, I would uh I would take Cliff then. I would take Cliff, a, a rim running, uh, athletic. <laughs> Honestly, would probably come full circle because Tom Izzo, when he recruited Mati Sissoko, probably thought he would be Cliff Amarui, and he wasn't. <laughs> so like, you know, he he might be able to get by with uh you know, fitting right in. And then secondly, just because like, I, I think Michigan state needs the best guard in the portal. So who do you think is the best guard in the portal, Riley? Right now. Mm, I mean, are you looking for like a ball handler or like more of a wing? Uh, Probably a ball handler. Y'all know, I mean, per Evans rankings, Tony Perkins and Sean Padula are one and two in his oh. transfer rankings. I'll take Padula. Padula is tough. Padula and green and white Loki might feed families. I'll take Padula. There's not Do a whiz? less not a less Michigan State player in the country than Sean Padula. <laughs> Riley said I could take anybody. <laughs> this is true. Uh I you... think Sean Sean Padula has a little bit of wolf wolf in him. Maybe. There, there'd be potential he could be a Spartan dog. Yeah, I don't think Izzo would ever let that player run point guard. Now, if he's running up and down as a six one guy, catching and firing threes, maybe. But yeah. um, also, y'all ever seen any dogs that have their bark box taken out? Oh, so it's just like uh, 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 they squeal, like squeal. So the last four years of my program feels like feels like we they feel like they feel like we got fixed at the vet. Now, uh, good lord. Uh, quick question: Is AJ Store in the portal, or are we yeah. saying he's just in the draft? He only entered he's the just, draft. He didn't enter the portal. But he's obviously in the portal, right? Not in it yet. Got to be someone who's in. Best, right. best I can All best right. I can do is Riley Kugel. Am I allowed? So we're talking Michigan here. Am I allowed to presume that the three Florida Atlantic stars are coming? Because no, this is this is supposed to make it the, the fun exercise. You've already you've had your time it, to talk about the three Florida Atlantic guys. It, but the the answer is infinitely more interesting if those three are coming because then I'm talking about how to fit around them. If I'm building a roster from zero, then my first two answers are two of the Florida Atlantic players. Okay, okay, fair, fair, fair. You can you can assume those three are coming, so you can build around them since you're. Yeah, probably, I, my, like, my answer would be John L. Davis and Vlad Golden if I'm not allowed to already have those guys. Let's 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 do middle of that. You get Vlad and John L. And then you could pick two. Okay. So I don't get Elijah Martin? No. No. Okay. I have John L. Davis and Vlad Golden as my team already. Yes. Uh, I am taking hmm, that actually makes it interesting because I had the perfect fits around if they had Martin already. I uh I'm taking Malik Mack. You forgot the best guard in the portal when you were talking about who's the best guard in the portal. You landed on Sean Padula. Malik Mack is the is, best guard in the portal. Isn't he already – he's already committed, though, isn't he? Malik Mack? No. Oh, I thought – okay. Well, I would like to change that then because I did, thought – Where, I thought where did you think Malik Mack committed? Georgetown. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, I 
I was wrong. Then I thought Did he I missed something. Is that even speculated? I'm I think sure it's speculated either Georgetown or Maryland. It's one of the DMV schools. It's not Maryland. Maryland just got Gillespie from Belmont. Yeah, Maryland, Maryland got Gillespie, and I don't think they're getting Mac. And then, it, I mean, he might choose Georgetown because DMV, but like, he's going to get better offers than that. I think Malik Mac. I, I thought it was a done. I, I was saying it was a done deal. So, oh, I haven't seen any of that. Uh, I yeah, I would take Mac. I think he's a star, and I think John L is better, not as a true point guard. So, give me a Mac John L guard backcourt. I love that. Uh, that would be sick. And that you you not having Elijah Martin given to me changes this. I would have picked Trey Townsend at the four to fit in between those guys, but uh, I will take a guy who has no chance of going to Michigan, who has a Final Four already. I'll take Riley Kugel. Wait, who is who are Kugel's Final Four? Kugel's Final Four was just announced, and it's all prestigious programs: Arizona, UConn, Kansas, and Houston. Wow, that is yep. quite the Final Four. He's also not in the portal. He's not in. No, I think I think Google's in the portal. He, no, yeah, he, he, yeah, he is. Is he? Yeah. Yesterday he announced. And he already like, has a final but, four. But I'm saying like you announce you're in it, but you're not. You got to like actually file paperwork to get oh. in it. I mean, what's I, th- this is this is logistical stupidity. He there's a tweet from Tipton and everyone saying he has entered the portal, and now we're sitting here saying he's not in the portal, even though he has a final four. Like. Travis. Just you know, paperwork stuff. The yeah, only, you, I, hey, I, you know all about paperwork stuff. I want to give a shout to one other player that I, I think deserves mention here. Boopy Miller's in the portal, and I think Boopy could be awesome wherever he chooses to go. Yeah, I agree on that. For the record, my two picks would have been Cliff, and I would have taken Tucker DeVries, let him play on the wing in Chapel Hill. Yuck. You don't like Tucker? You're not a Tucker guy, Greg? I, I I can only deal with nepotism for so long, boys. Like, did did we not just watch Tucker DeVries yeah. shiver, visibly shiver in the final four minutes of an NCAA tournament game? Yeah, yeah, that that is a little bit scary. If I'm if I'm being honest, yeah. But it's it's his second straight year he did that. Two two consecutive times he melted down and was like tears streaming down his face. But Kugel just disappeared for most of the season. I feel like that's the second most intriguing wing right now. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, I didn't love the Kugel pick. Again, I wanted Elijah Martin, but uh, you guys made me change. It kills me to not give a shout out to uh, Quadir Copeland of my and Carter Syracuse Orange, who is <laughs> there for the taking. That guy just doesn't. That guy doesn't care about anything. Not a haircut. Not a shape up. Not a lineup. Just pure ball. Can we quickly do this exercise? We each pick two players that aren't in the portal that we want to steal and make portal to our team. Just round the horn super quickly. Like anybody? You can steal anybody, yeah. Anybody that has eligibility remaining. Ryan Kalkbrenner. That's a good one. I would steal Elliot Cadeau and Jade Nakins and torment the two of you about it for months. <laughs> That'd be fun just to see. I would be hurt just, to see you just like prop those two up on a I, I would honestly enjoy that. <laughs> would Greg would be the one sending me texts of Elliot Cadeau passing highlights. And I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I try to tell you and you didn't listen. About to make me cuss at you on Holy Week, Greg. Riley, <laughs> point blank right now, would you trade Elliot Cadeau for Doug McDaniel? No. That's a little crazy, right? That Mark? is a little crazy. I mean, they, they they sag to the block, man. He has the ball. And like, that's the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen in my life. It, not even that. He has no answers for it. He has no he has no rebuttal to that. No twist to it. He doesn't know who he is, Card. He kept shooting the ball. He doesn't know who he is. I respect him shooting it because if someone backs off of you like that, you got to – that's so disrespectful. you, you got to miss the shot <laughs> four I times in a row. <laughs> I'll take it. Crazy. Okay. All right. Do you want to give an answer quickly, Carter? No. Yeah. Uh, I would take Hunter Dickinson and John L. Davis. Ah, uh, that would hurt me a lot, yeah. really badly. Yeah. Nice answer. Good rebuttal. Yeah. Gus Yaldin's in the portal, by the way. I know that's one of your favorites. Is he? He is. Yeah. Well, let's get to work. <laughs> yeah. Get to the get to the DMs. Final topic today, Riley. What do we got? All right. We can hit this one quickly. I want to talk about the Louisville coaching search and finally just break down this Pat Kelsey hire. I'd be down for this. 
Uh, basketball, basketball, PJ Fleck. That's a great comparison. That is, that is a great. Is is Fleck like a really? Like I know, I know he's like a quarter zip, high underneath the quarter zip guy. But is he like a demonstrative, like energy, just wild guy? I know he's a wild. I know he's a wild guy. Don't get me wrong. Yes. I'm just talking about like, yeah, just demonstrative. He is. Yeah, like he he his whole thing is he sprints out of the tunnel and then sprints from one side to the other side at the beginning of the fourth quarter and like it's yeah it's the mike mcdaniel you know how he does the bit where he like runs away from the report pj fleck does it not as a bit like that's what he does <laughs> i also think it helps that like minnesota's colors are similar to charleston and winthrop so it's like you can you can envision pat kelsey in a similar get up i kind of hope he starts wearing a tie at louisville just to complete this comparison yeah. i do think kelsey can coach i uh look here's my quick read on this i think louisville got screwed mostly by Dusty May here. And if Dusty May had chosen to go to Louisville, Michigan would be going through this exact same process right now. The reality is that outside of Dusty May and maybe Jerome Tang, depending on how you feel about him, there were no other like pretty no-brainer hires for teams like this right now, unless Cal wanted to leave Kentucky. There just Mm -hmm. aren't. like There's no proven great high major coach that was willing to leave for these jobs. So you're going to have to stretch and hire someone who's unproven. And the best of the unproven, everyone consensus-wise, agreed it was Dusty May. And after Dusty, it's why, like, Michigan would have hired Darian DeVries probably. And I I don't know if that works. He's at West Virginia now, and I don't know if he's going to be good there. So for Louisville, like, you know, they were rumored with shirts. And shirts, apparent, uh, honestly, this sounds really messy. The story I heard today is that Dusty May and shirts were talking throughout the process. And, like, they're friendly to each other. And it was known by both of them that it was Dusty's job to say yes or no to. And if Dusty said no, it was going to Shirts. They both knew that, and they both openly talked about it. Dusty told Shirts he was taking Louisville, and so Shirts signed something uh, with it's. He's at Drake, right? That's where he's at, I believe. St. Louis. St. Louis. 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 Yeah, yeah. So Shirts Shirts signs like a tender with St. Louis, and then May surprised everybody and took Michigan. And Louisville was like, okay, like shirts, the job's yours. And he's like, well, I can't. I just signed with St. Louis. So Louisville got screwed. Dusty May screwed them. And <laughs> I like, I think Kelsey's fine. Like, I think of all the other options, I I could see him doing well compared to some of these other like lower ceiling hires, but they got screwed. Yeah, that's I think spicy. Kelsey that's spi- that, wait, that's spicy too, because Kelsey and May had that little like that little thing going on at the field of 68 thing earlier in the year. Yep. Yeah. I think Kelsey is the better coach than shirts. I think he's more proven because he's gotten what he's been to three of the past five tournaments. Um, I'm a little bit bearish on mid major coaches coming to the ACC, just because when you, you look at like someone like Mike Young and Steve Forbes who have had their moments where um, they've looked really good or they've gotten the most out of players or have maximized the roster. But it, I think the ceiling for those guys has for Wake, it hasn't even making the tournament. For Virginia Tech, it's been like a seven seed. Um, and with Kelsey, I think his style of taking a bunch of threes, playing up tempo, and controlling the glass like will largely be conducive to getting wins in the ACC. But I still don't know how much of a ceiling raiser he is, particularly because, I mean, his tournament track record once he gets there has not been good. Um, like not even competing with Alabama this year. And I think back to that Chandler Vaudrin Winthrop team that got to play. Villanova without Colin Gillespie and just got dog walked. Um, I don't know how he's going to be getting dudes to Louisville. Like it's a, it's a program that needs a bit of a makeover and maybe he's going to recruit internationally like he did at Charleston um, and be able to build that way. But I think as long as he can win, I don't know, 16 games next year, Louisville fans will probably be satisfied with the start. But yeah, I I think you want to at least be in the dance by year three, I think, to not ha- have the tensions blazing again. Um, I just think with how much damage Kenny Payne did to this program, he won't be given as large of a leash as he may have otherwise been given. Yeah, that's fair. Can we talk about how funny it is that Louisville is hiring a Chris Mack guy? That Isn't is. Chris Mack's coaching tree? Yeah. yeah. Hold on. I did not know that. Yeah, he was with him as Xavier, I think. Yeah, that's where it started out. So the 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 full circle moment here is Louisville moved off of Chris Mack only to hire a Chris Mack <laughs> protege. 
kind of wild. That's Especially because if they – they Chris Mack probably should have never been fired to begin with. That's my belief. I know a lot of people really clown how bad the Mack thing went. I think he had one bad year, and it was the pandemic mm-hmm. year. Like every other year, Mack was fine at Louisville. And... I mean, they were ranked number one the year before the pandemic. Yeah. Jordan they Nora. Got, they got they real were projected spicy. like three seed. Strange. I'm I'm really curious what happens with Mac. Honestly, like I I think Mac will be very good, uh, in future steps here. And I I I will say if the Deaver thing doesn't work out, I'd be kicking myself that Ohio State didn't get Mac. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm I'm surprised he didn't get more play on some of these serious openings. To be honest, like he wasn't even featured, and it's kind of strange. Um, Cart will when when does Kelsey make his first NCAA tournament at Louisville? I think I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that he gets fired before he makes it. Ooh. Spicy. I, just, I don't think he's going to be able to get talent there. Like, straight up, I don't. Like, you need some talent to get there. And I think that he, he – like, if, we'll, we'll do the thing with your coach, G. Dusty was getting high major guys at FAU. I, the guys that he was getting at Charleston are good, don't get me wrong. But none of those guys strike me as high major starters for tournament teams. FAU guys strike me as high major starters for tournament teams. So I think a lot has remained to be seen there. Energy only gets you so far. Energy gets you far when you're playing, you know, at Charleston and you're going hard. But like, I just, I highly doubt or not highly doubt there. I'm skeptical of the talent being enough to get them to the tournament. Yeah. I don't know who he's going to bring. He could theoretically bring all three of their leading scorers this year. I know Berzovich is already in the portal, but I like. I, do you even want those guys if you're Louisville? Do you want Charleston's three best? Like, but those guys are getting you to 13 to 15 wins, and I don't know if that's getting you in the tournament unless you win the <laughs> ACC. Like, yes, like I, I don't know if Ben Burnham is as desired as uh, other other guys that would come. Rain Smith would probably be good at Louisville. Yeah, right. Yeah, he'll, he'll shoot the ball a lot. Yeah, interesting. We'll be we'll be fascinating to watch. Uh. Final question, Riley. What's your fear level of Pat Kelsey as a fellow ACC fan? One to ten. How afraid of Pat Kelsey at Louisville are you? Three. three. Would you have been more afraid of Richard Pitino? Yeah. That's crazy. I would. I would have been. Like, I would have been like a four with Richard Pitino. <laughs> what, what would you, What would you have been if Dusty went to Louisville? Five. There, there I'm you go. sorry, Greg. There you go, Louisville fans. Oh, that's fine. I'd I'd take that as. That means we got the best guy. The only guy I think you would have higher than that that is a serious name this cycle is Jerome Tang, right? Mm-hmm. I'd probably put him at like a seven. And also, to be honest, like, doesn't it say something that none of these schools are getting Tang? Like, there's a lot of openings this year that Tang would have left for, and he's not even getting a serious offer. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. I, I kind of got vibes that he might not play nice with others, and people don't want that. I think there's more messiness to tang than people realize and it's not i don't think he's not getting these jobs because of kansas state's record this year i think there's more there but i with that said i would have loved tang at michigan if if dusty didn't work out so i guess we'll see be fascinating okay one big thing presented by bigby easter weekend uh riley you want to go first here yeah uh first i got two big things shout out to guy met him in chapel hill yesterday had an elite lunch at al's burger shack uh great kid Loves the show, as y'all know. And uh, eventually I'll join the Discord and see how he is, <laughs> how his Discord skills are. Second big thing, I got to give a shout out to Blue Light Glasses, a must for the NCAA tournament when you watch a ton of basketball and it feels like your eyes are rolling in the back of your head and starting to like go backwards. So yeah, if you never tried Blue Light Glasses before, I got to give it a shout, give it a try, especially for uh, Sweet 16 weekend and into the Final Four. Yeah, everyone's got their blue light glass. I don't, I don't have my glasses down here with me, but uh, we have a guys... little, we have a Venn diagram right now of like vacuums, blue light glasses. Now you and I just need to come together on something before the show ends. Yeah, you guys look, you guys look impeccable. By the way, you look like, um, like librarians, but like with a separate secret life where like they're special at like a low key cocktail speakeasy after work. Can you say librarian again? God, I hate doing this, librarian. There you go. Good work. Good composure. <laughs> What's your one big thing, Cart? 
Uh, my one big thing, actually, I guess this is kind of where we do come together, uh, Gregory, uh, just because I found out about these when I was at your house. Um, I just want to send a shout out to these. Um, your daughter loves these things, right? If, if I'm not mistaken. No way you actually bought those. <laughs> Bro, these are absolutely incredible. Like, I bought, like, a, a 24-pack uh, off Amazon, I think it was, and... I, I'm pretty, yeah, your daughter was like eating, and they're vegan too, by the way. So like, that's like me and Meg can both eat them, but they are incredibly, incredibly good. Uh, I enjoy them greatly. Also like not that bad for you, 100 calories for a bag. Um, There's no added sugar in it. It's, and it's, I swear to God, they're so tasty. Yeah. They're just peanut butter puffs. My daughter, that's her favorite snack. And she Bro, they are so, have you like ever? Have you ever just housed the house the bag of these? So I I have this very uh, I don't know in my head mentally. I will not eat my daughter's food like that's her food. I'm not gonna steal from my daughter. So I, I have not that. I have not tried one. Mal always tries to get me to eat them, but I don't. Yeah. Well, I did. Well, I did steal one from your daughter, and that's the reason why I bought these. Yeah, I'm glad they're good. I'm, I cracks me up that you actually bought those. Uh, my one big thing: it's Easter weekend, and this is. A very, I think, obvious thing that a lot of people feel, but it needs to be said. Uh, peeps stink. Peeps are horrible. Peeps are gross. Don't do that. Just don't do that to yourself. Have more respect for yourself and your family. There's plenty of really good Easter-related snacks, decorations. Uh, I did go get the Easter basket with my wife for our daughter, and we had a lot of consideration knowing she can't eat candy. Like, do we put candy in it just for the aesthetic of it? We probably do. We'd probably pick it some ourselves. Uh, you know, just you want it to look at like the look is a big part of Easter. Don't do it. No matter how how you think the peeps look, they don't belong on a table. They don't belong in existence, to be honest. They hurt the world much more than they help the world. And uh, we need to be an unequivocally anti peeps program. I'm with you on that. Peeps are, peeps are awful. I love peeps. Oh, God, who could have, who could, I knew it. I knew that was coming. I knew it. But God, why? <laughs> Big marshmallow guy. That's all I got to say. Of, of course. Here we go. Here we go. Especially peep the peeps that are chocolate coated. Can't beat them. Going to be housing some of those this weekend. I mean, you you can beat them. You absolutely They, they are so easily beatable. <laughs> like, they, they, on a <laughs> level of beatable, they are NC State in the ACC tournament championship game beatable. That's the show. Have a great Easter, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Riley Davis. We'll be back next week.